Amen. Good morning, everyone. Morning. Good morning. Yeah, amen. We really thank God that after two months, we are coming back again to have a corporate praise and worship and service in our church. Are you excited this morning when you attended the church? Amen. 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 Praise God. And uh, we are also very thankful with the guidance of our God, with the leadership of this church, of this country, I can say. If you just, if just remember that some countries, there are COVID-19. But here, we know that in New Zealand, it's almost gone. It's almost finished at the moment. So let us continue to pray that, you know, it will completely eliminate in this country of New Zealand. And we're also praying with the other country. I think it's better also to pray for them because we know that uh, like in the Philippines or in America, in Spain, especially now in Brazil, where they're having a lot of uh, casualty or people who have this uh, virus. And uh, before we start with our message, let us uh, go into prayer as we pray for them. Our Heavenly Father, oh God, thank you, oh Lord God, for this first Sunday that we experience your presence, oh Lord God, that we gather together to worship you in spirit and in truth. Thank you, O Lord God, for giving us the freedom again, the freedom once more to seek your face in the midst of our church, O God, that we believe that your presence will be in our midst as we worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, O God, we pray for the countries who are having some difficulties dealing with this COVID-19, O God. Father, O God, we pray for their leaders, O Lord God. We pray, O Lord God, to help them to find the right direction, O God, with your guidance on how to eliminate this COVID-19, O Lord God. Father, O God, we pray for your presence in its leaders, O Lord God, that they will act according to your will, according to your guidance, O God, and with uh, the advisors that they have, O God, we pray that they will help each other to come up with the right solutions to eliminate this virus, O God. Father, O God, we pray that one day, O God, its countries in this world, O God, they will have this freedom again to worship you in spirit and in truth in their churches, O Lord God. Father, we pray for them, O God. And also, Lord, we pray today, as we listen to your word, we ask for your presence. Lord, help me, O God, to deliver your word with boldness, with guidance, and with your presence, O God. And this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Our normal life, we have a very special message for today. And this message is all about normal life. Here, our normal life without COVID-19. If you remember beginning of this year, where during that time, there's no COVID-19. During that time, we can talk to everyone without any social distancing. Even there are our relatives, friends, loved ones, colleagues, office mates, and even strangers, right? When we go to the mall, we can talk to them face to face without any proper distance. We can easily greet everyone. We can hug, we can kiss, we can embrace, and we can handshake during that time. Some may cough and not cover their mouth. Some of them are normal to them. Some may forget to wash and sanitize their hands regularly. And some of us can easily travel wherever they want to go with the different countries or state, or maybe even going to North Island, somewhere in Auckland. This is our normal life without COVID-19. And this is our old normal life. Now, going back to the present, our normal life with COVID-19, now we need to keep the social distancing with everyone. We need to avoid the physical contact we need to cover our mouth when we come by elbow or tissue. We need to wash and sanitize our hands regularly. And we need to check first the country that we need to travel if the COVID-19 virus is very active on that country or not. And because of that, this is now our normal life. Have you noticed that? When you go to the mall, you're keeping a distance with the people around you. 
When you go to the church, we are also keeping our distance, especially if we don't know the other people around us, or especially with the strangers, when we spend our time. So now this is now our normal life. That if we will not keep ourselves in this normal life, what will happen to us? Especially when we are in the place where this virus is very high, there's a tendency that we can easily get this. And we know that this is not a joke. People are dying. People are dying, especially those countries where they did not follow this normal life that we need to do right now. Now, what is our normal life without Christ? Going to the life of a Christian, for sure, what is our normal life without Christ in our life? Number one, we turn away from God. If God is going there, God is here, we are moving away from God. As it says in this passage, Isaiah 53, 6, We all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way. It is true. Amen. I do believe when the person is keeping away from the presence of God, for sure that he's going away. He's turning away from the presence of God. And what will happen? We will see that in the following passage. It says here, we are sinners for sure. When we turn away from God, for sure, that we are sinners. It says here, Romans 3, 10 to 12. And it is written, none is righteous, no one, no, not one, no one understands, no one seeks for God. All have turned aside together, they have become worthless, no one does good, not even one. The Bible tells us directly that the moment that we turn away from God, for sure, the sins will come to our life. And those sins, we can easily see that in the later part of our message. But for sure, when we are away from God, we turn away from God, we become sinners in our life. Thirdly, we love this world. When we are, you know, our normal life without Christ, for sure, we love this world. It says in 1 John 2.15, Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not with them. It's a very good reminder. What does it mean we love this world? When we say we love this world, we really love to do things that are available in this world. And it is not according to the word of God. As an example, later part we will see that one by one. There are so many things that we can do in this world, which is against in the word of God. We will find that later one by one. But when we say we love the world, there's a tendency for us as we live in this world, we're trying to do things which is against with the word of God. You can think of something that will give you an idea what are those things that I'm saying. To love this world, meaning that there's a tendency that we can do all the things, all the vices, all the available things that we want to do in this world by our own flesh or life only, not because of God's will or guidance. We will see that in the later part, but keep in mind, brethren, this is a very important reminder for each and every one of us. In this verse, 1 John 2.15, it's very clear. Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, what it says here, love for the Father is not with them. So meaning we, if we want to follow Jesus Christ, it's too important to think of about this verse. We do not love this world so much. That sometimes some people, they don't want to leave this world. Some of them, they already reached more than 100 years and they don't want to die. They keep on saying, I want to stay in this, low, this uh, world. I want to live more. And lastly, our normal life without Christ, we follow our flesh. When we follow our flesh, it says in Galatians 5, the acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, 
we will go here into details because this is a very important now. If you are a senior, most of them, or maybe some of them, we are doing as a normal when there's no Christ in our life. And we will see that one by one. Are you ready? Amen. Amen. First, we follow our place. When we say we follow our place, we follow what is the desire of our heart, ourselves, without looking in the presence of God. Okay? When we say we follow our flesh. First thing is sexual immorality, unlawful sexual intercourse. Secondly, impurity is an immoral act. Impurity meaning anything that we are doing which is immoral act. To ourselves, to other people around us, to everyone. Thirdly, debauchery. Debauchery meaning excessive indulgence in sex, alcohol, or drugs. This is also a very uh, easiest way to say or the, to give the meaning of debauchery. The fourth one, idolatry. The worship of idols, putting something before God. Idolatry normally it is not only with the gods that we are facing, like anything that we want to put in our face and we worship that one. But also idolatry can be idolatry when we are putting something ahead or higher than God. As an example, we are more likely some personal or personality, we love them so much compared with God. Money, we love money so much with our God. Our education, we really love our education than God. Sometimes our status in life, since that we have a very good life, sometimes we love our way of life instead of God. So that's idolatry, meaning putting something before God. Witchcraft or sorcerer, this is a thing that people are doing, what they call in the Philippines, like the work of Mangkukula. Hatred, this is an intense like, dislike, or hate. Brethren, always remember, we, we as a Christians, we live by faith, and not by hate. Amen? Amen. Keep that in mind. It's a very good, uh, we can say, something to say, that we live by faith, and not by hate. Amen? Amen. I agree with that also. So, meaning hatred, let us try to remove this in our heart. Let us free our heart. If there's any hatred in ourselves, what will happen? Stress. After some stress, after some time, this is what will happen. It will explode and it, it will burst. And if that will explode, what will happen? You don't have any control anymore in your mouth. You can say what you want to say, even it is against the word of God. So hatred is very important to control. Remove the hatred in our heart. Amen? Amen. Always keep that in mind. We live by faith and not by hate. Amen? Next one. Discord. Discord meaning disagreement between people. Or we can say disagreement between the brothers to brothers, sister and brothers, sisters to sisters. So meaning that disagreement between people is also this is a flesh also that we are doing sometimes. So, disagreement between people or brethren. Jealousy. Jealousy is in the state of jealous. When you say jealous, it's like people or other people are getting better life than you. And you're feeling, supposedly this will happen to me. You're trying to get the possession of the others. You are trying to put them down because there's a jealousy already. So jealousy is the state of jealousy that we don't need to do. Amen? Being a follower of God, it is too important for us to raise other people when they achieve something. Amen? It's a very good way of living as a follower of Jesus Christ. We will know that in the later part. Fits of rage. What does it mean? Very strong. See, this is what will happen when we are hatred. Fits of rage will come, meaning very strong and uncontrolled anger. Did you experience that you have an uncontrolled anger? Amen. Amen. It's true. 
I remember, I always remember that when I was young, during that time I was maybe around eight or nine years old, I was playing with my brother, and we are using this, they call it duyan, or a siso. So our, our goal together is, every 100 times that we're pushing, we will alternately sitting there. So 100 was already over with my brother, but he don't want to come down. So I was feeling irritated and was very, very angry. And you know, the next thing that I was done, because of that, I just take in a snow, I stone, and I hit my brother in the head. That's uncontrolled anger. Uncontrolled anger. Sometimes even your brother, you can do that. If you didn't control your anger. So let us control our anger by removing hatred in ourselves. Next one, self-ambition. Self-ambition and earnest desire for some type of achievement or distinction. Sometimes because of our self-ambition, we forgot already to know what are the right thing to do in the eyes of God. Sometimes we are doing a lot of plan for ourselves because that's our ambition and we forget what God wants us to do. Dissensions, disagreement that leads to discord. Next one, factions, a small organized dissenting group with a larger one. This is a very bad one. It is like within the group, some of the groups are already discussing that they want to pull out in the main group. Which is a little bit not uh, good. Factions. Envy, a feeling of discontent and ill will because of another's advantage or possession. It's a very bad thing. No? Envy is a feeling of discontentment. It is happening, right? There are some people, when they have this in their heart, they are trying to get the possession of the others. They are trying to get or that advantage that they want to get from the other people. Next one, drunkenness. Is drinking is okay? It's too hard to measure. It says here, drunkenness, the state of being drunk or intoxication. Sometimes this drunkenness is very hard to explain with some people and some pe people they cannot be able to understand easily. When we learn how to smoke, we start with a single pump up. Until such time, we learn on how to do the cigarette in a daily basis. Maybe one stick a day, in the later part, one pump a day. So, it's the same thing. When we started to drink a little bit, if we cannot control it, there's a tendency that maybe one day you are not drinking one only but one bottle, but one case already. And what how many how many bottles in one case? 24 bottles. When we're when you're taking beer and beer or San Miguel beer. So drunkenness, the state of being drunk or intoxication. And we know already, when you say when you're intoxicated, there's a tendency that you lose already your mindset on how to do the right thing and the last one is orgies or a wild party this wild party also consists of people who are drinking so much and there are some in discrimination about sex about this one this is not good so meaning all of these are the things that we follow our flesh when our normal life is without christ this one, brethren, in Galatians 5.21, it says here, Those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. This is a very good reminder for each and every one of us. If we think in ourselves that one of these we will not be able to follow, let us try to work out to change this. We don't want to live those things that are, you know, against the word of God or that will let us to be away from the kingdom of God. Now, what is our normal life with Christ? Earlier it was without Christ, now we are going to a what is our normal life with Christ. Number one is we turn to God. 
Amen? We turn to God. When God is there, when we're walking in this part, one day we realize that we need God. So what we have done? 180 degrees turn towards God. And from there, we started to know God. As it says in this passage, Isaiah 45, 22, Turn to me and be saved. All you ends of the earth, for I am God and there's no other. So what is the first requirements to have a normal life with Christ? Is we need to turn to God and we will be saved. Number two, our normal life with Christ, we became His followers or we are now His followers. As it says in Matthew 4.19, and He said to them, Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. You will see a lot of people, or we can say, who decided to follow Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, you will say them one by one that they are also encouraging other people to follow God or to follow the Christian way. As Jesus said in this way, we also, as a follower of Jesus Christ who are living in this world now, we are His people we are his fishers man and our job is to fish for people outside especially those people who are lost those people who don't know the word of god amen amen that's our life we are his followers thirdly our no normal life with christ we love his word amen how's your life changed can you tell me? Is your life changed without reading the Word of God? Is your life was changed without uh, listening with the Word of God? To enable us to love His Word is by means of going more details, reading more details with His Word. And by doing that, we can easily see here in Psalm 119, verse 105, it says, Can we read this all together? Yes. Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. It's a very useful verse that we can put in our record. That your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. Always remember, brethren, that the word of God it's our guidance wherever we go. Whether we are in the shopping malls, we are in our office, we are in the school, we are outside, the Word of God is uh, the lamp of our feet wherever we go. And the moment that we use the Word of God as a lamp in our life, for sure, the people who are around us will also be enlightened with the Word of God from our life. Amen? I do believe that each and every one of us, we want to be a light of this world. Amen? As we go through, as we follow the Word of God, for sure, that one day, people around us will also realize that, that there is God, that they can also follow His light. Amen? And lastly, our normal life with Christ is we follow our God. Amen? Earlier, we follow our flesh, but now we follow our God. In Galatians 5, it says here, verse 22, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. Forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Now we will go into detail or a definition or a short meaning one by one to enable us to understand all of this. And this is the fruit of the Spirit, meaning this is the result 
the moment that we follow God, the Spirit of God will lead us and this will be the fruit that we will be doing in the later part of our life, the moment we follow our God. Number one, it is love. We follow our God of love and in, this is an intense feeling of deep affection. We know that because of love of God, we can now easily love other people. Either they call it, either they are our loved ones or enemies, they are our friends, not friends, they are our colleagues, not colleagues, and even we can love the strangers. So which means we can love other people unconditionally because of God. And that is love that God wants us to do. Second thing is a joy. A joy is a feeling of great pleasure and happiness. God wants us to experience this joy. Amen? The joy is something that you feel that for you it is greater than the happiness that you can see in this world. That the joy is knowing that God is there for you. God is guiding you. God is leading you. God will never leave you nor forsake you. Then that is joy. And when you have the joy in your heart, whatever situations that you are in in this world, then you can still smile. Amen? And when you smile and you're, you're having some difficulties in life or problem, you can still smile and say, Lord, I am giving this to you. I know that you can still do something in my life. Sometimes, brethren, what you will notice with the people around us, there are two kinds of people that in CDC our life. Those people, they know that we have God. And those people that they can see that we don't have God. It depends on how we perform. Amen? And some people, when we're, when we're having a joy in our life, whatever happens to us, and they had seen us, normally they ask us, why are you still smiling? You are already facing that problem, you are almost done, but you are still smiling. What is your secret? Our secret is because of God. Amen. God is giving us the joy in this difficult world or problem in this world. Thirdly, peace is a freedom from disturbance. If we have a peace which is coming from God, for sure it's the same thing. Whatever happens, whatever situations, you are still on peace. This COVID-19, a lot of people are facing so, so much difficulties. Some of the people, they are having depression, anxiety because of this COVID-19. But for us, being a follower of Jesus Christ or being a follower of God, what you have experienced during that time, we are still at peace. Amen? Because we follow our God. For parents, this one is a little bit difficult to understand. Self-control, restraint, and tolerance. So that's called patience, self-control, restraint, and tolerance. Kindness. A lot of people are saying, oh, you're so very kind. Kindness is only a single one, but when it is a kindness, is you are doing multiple things, which is the right one. First is the quality of being. Number one, friendly, generous, and considerate. So when people are saying you're very kind, we can say that character is coming from God. It is a guidance that is also coming from God. Next one is goodness. The quality of being morally good or virtuous. The quality of being morally good or virtuous. This is now a normal life that what we are doing is the right way to do in the eyes of God and also in the eyes of man. Faithfulness, the quality of being faithful or fidelity. Gentleness, the quality of being kind, tender, or mild manner. Can you imagine, brethren, as we follow our God, we can have this fruit of the Spirit, or we can have this attitude or characters that we can do now because we follow God. Amen? And lastly, is self-control. Self-control is the ability to control oneself. 
Knowing all of these things, brethren, now we can easily see that this, as we follow this, meaning that against such things, there's no law that can give to us. Meaning when you say there's no law, there's no law that was given by God if we are doing this. The more that you are doing this, meaning the more that you are following God, the more that you are meditating to our God. Amen? And here, as we go closer to the end, in 2 Corinthians 5.17, it says here, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone, the new is here. I'll repeat again. This is a very famous verse, especially for those people who are looking for God, that their life are completely messed. The moment that they accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, then their old life will be gone and the new life will come. We will see that in the next passage. As we look with this, in the left side, or in one side here, we can easily read all the things that are following but out by our flesh. And in the right side are those things that we are following or what that we are doing when we follow our God. And the moment that we accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, then these old things must gone in our life. And the new has come. These are the things now that we need to do, which is as we follow our God. Looking with this in summary with our message. Our normal life without Christ is we turn away from God. We are sinners. We love this world. We follow our flesh. And in the right side is our normal life with Christ that we turn to God. We are His followers. We love His word. We follow our God. And in verse, this verse, which is 1 Corinthians 5.17, I summarize that the old has gone as we follow or as we go into a normal life with Christ. This old must gone and the new has come in our normal life. Now, I have only two questions as we end. If we already accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior of our life and we turn away from all the wicked ways and we turn to God, these are, I can say, questions for each and every one of us. As we go through with the, uh, we follow the flesh of life, as we go through with that one by, one by one, if we think that one of them or some of them or majority of them are still in our life, this is a question. Is that, are we still following our flesh? Or we are following our God or Christ? That's the first question that we need to ask ourselves. And the answer is, that will depend on us. How we follow God. Or maybe some of them, maybe very few, maybe one of them. If you think that you haven't managed to overcome that, it's better to pray to the Lord. And ask God to give you freedom on that very part this works of the flesh in our life to remove it so that you can live with love with joy and peace that will come into our life secondly what is our normal life what is now our normal life is our normal life is without Christ or our normal life is with Christ. The answer is with us for each and every one of us. We know our heart. We can easily say what is our normal life right now in the presence of our God. 
As we end, I encourage everyone to stand. That we need to always keep these two questions as we end in our message. Number one is, are we still following our flesh or any one of those things against our that flesh? Secondly, what is our normal life right now? As we go in closing, let us pray for this. And for whatever things that we have managed to remove in our flesh, doing those bad things that will keep us away from the kingdom of God. Let us ask for the forgiveness and let us ask God to guide us as we go through in our life towards God. Let us pray. I encourage everyone to raise your hand. Our Heavenly Father, we heard your word about the normal life that we have. About the normal life without you in our life. We have seen those things, O Lord God, that we want to remove in our life today. Father, O God, we pray. And we ask for your forgiveness, O God. If we have some shortcomings with those things, O Lord God. We pray, O Lord God, to forgive us, O Lord, for those things that are worked by our flesh. But today, O Lord God, instead of doing those things, we are going to follow you, O Lord God. But those things, O Lord God, that we will do right now is to share your love, to share your joy, and to share your peace to each and every one of us also with the people around us, O Lord. Father, O God, we don't want to live a normal life without you. We want to live that our normal life will be in your presence, that wherever we go, your presence will be with us, that we will not be shy or ashamed to share your word and to talk to the people around us. Because we know that you are with us, O oh God. Father, we pray your Holy Spirit, O oh Lord God, to stay in our life, O oh God. Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit will help us to produce this fruit of the Spirit. That the joy will be there, the peace, the kindness, the faithfulness. Lord, thank you, O oh God, for this thing, O oh God. That because of you, we can change our life completely from a very darkest part of our life into a very clear life, O Lord God, with your guidance. Father, O God, we pray as we live in this place, O Lord God, that your word will stay in our life, O God. That as you said in your word, that your word will be a light or a love to our feet. That wherever we go, oh God, we will use your word, oh God, to reach people, to love people, and to talk to the other people around us, oh God. Thank you, Lord, oh God, for today. Thank you, Lord, oh God, for your presence in our place.